say something here. Uh, what you have in your possession is a congressional bill. It's a rough draft that we wrote up. It's a real bad rough draft. However, Jewish Voice for Peace is looking at it. Sidney Levy, uh, I don't know if he's the president or not, but he's taking a look at it. Uh, America's Only New has it in their possession from what I know. That's how I contacted them. Uh, Daniel Rosobe, first of all, I don't know how to pronounce his name, and J Street has it in his possession. The most difficult barrier that we're facing is the two-state and one-state solution. You can't get past that. AFER will not speak to me unless I change it to a two-state solution because everybody on the Hill will not take you seriously if you suggest a one-state solution. So what's likely is the two-state solution. I respect AFER for that. In fact, if it wasn't for AFER, we wouldn't have the annual marches across the United States. So many bows disagree, but they their formidable uh, force in this, what's necessary to make this office. However, they say that uncon aid is unconditional. More appropriately, House of Representative Bill 1105. Am I correct? Omnibus Appropriations Act. There was a new appropriations process. Two thousand started, yeah. so yeah. But the premises, yeah, you would know more than <laughs> the premises for that is. The aid to Israel is based on the premise of the threats of the Arab countries and Al Qaeda. But where are we? Who are we fighting? Hamas and Hezbollah. In other words, we're giving all this massive aid to protect Israel from the surrounding Arab countries and Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda, I don't really consider a threat. Yeah, I know 9/11 happened, but they're probably on the front. But the Arab countries, possibly twice. And I'm Muslim, Japanese Muslim American. And I love Palestinians, I'm close to them, I'm not Palestinian. I favor them because they are the weaker and I always defend the weaker. But uh, I have to say, the Arab countries are threat twice. They tried to invade. I know technologically, they can't handle Israel. Israel has massive technology run by us. However, I guess Professor Noam Chomsky was right in saying that I may be thinking it's a false premise. He doesn't think that Israel is actually afraid of the Arab countries. It's quite possibly right. Uh, what Professor Noam Chomsky of MIT wants is a by a two-state solution foundation, which eventually leads to a binational one-state solution. I disagree with the esteemed gentleman, but I still respect him. I just, out of my history, my study of history of struggles, from the African American, South African, Middle Eastern, Asian, all over the world, that's my strength, the struggle of oppressed minorities. I don't see it, because the one thing that it doesn't address, no matter how many times you carve a piece of land into sections, you're not addressing something what Karen brought to life. I've never met Karen in my life, but when I saw her video, I said, that's it. When people are holding their arms together and marching together and saying we refuse the enemies, you've got the answer. It's the psychological aspect, the same thing that happened to minorities in this country. Native Americans, African Americans, in terms of Japanese Americans. There were good Caucasian Americans like William Lloyd Garrison that stood up and said, you're not going to do these to the business people. This is ungodly. This is unchristian. And they were the ones that allowed change to happen. We forget that. You know, we have to look at both sides of the story. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had help from the majority. So it's going to take an effort of combined all over the board, Muslims, Christians, Jewish. It's going to take whites, blacks, Hispanics in America if you're going to try to change something that's considered unconditional. This aid that's going to Israel, somehow, someway, ladies and gentlemen, we have to change it. It has to be changed. 74% of this population are refugees. Senator Graham said, and I work with his office regularly, I don't care if he gets offended. He said that until Hamas and Hezbollah recognizes Israel, there could be, exactly, there could be no peace. You have to accept their right to exist. I have many Jewish friends. Some of them agree with me when I'm going to say this. Hamas and Hezbollah has to, uh, uh, you know, recognize the Israel's right to exist. The Palestinians are about to cease to exist as a people in the very near. That's
That's my reply to him. Take that to him and tell him I said that. He doesn't care. I know he doesn't care. That's irrelevant. I know. That's the argument. The argument is not going to go anywhere. Because from, okay, from the vested interests of this country, they could get two hoots if the Palestinian people disappear. That's right. the aim of many of them. You're right. So take it and do what with it. You're absolutely right. The one thing I've noticed in this country that I've seen a nascent in Kuwait movement start to pick up the tide and start to become a little more organized and become a lot stronger. <coughs> Maybe you haven't noticed that, but I've noticed it. A lot of the kids at the universities are starting to be more open to saying what's happening to Palestinians are wrong. Exactly. I think something special in South Carolina is happening as well. And we can, especially in the South. You know, people tell me you can't do this in the South. You're going to die. You're going to get shot up or locked up. Right. I may have to write me phone calls and stuff of that nature and personal problems, but I'm still alive. I'm still happy. I'm going to have these family to be here every Friday because I'm doing something that's right. No, my point right. to you, Tyler, is not that, you know, but it's a sure to take it to, to uh, Graham. That's not an argument that's going to get anywhere oh, I agree. With, with Graham or I agree. With or Graham. Barrett. So the question is, what are the arguments and where is the money that will, in fact, get to and get their attention? Mm. Well, one argument is it's our taxpayer money and we have better uses for it. That's uh, one argument. Yeah. Then there's the arguments that are based on that we don't want to support what Israel is doing with it because we think what Israel is doing with our money is wrong. And then third is, you know, you could say it's in our national interest to make peace between Israelis and Palestinians. We've said for so long that the settlements are an obstacle to peace. There has to be a consequence. That's it. There has to be something. There has to be a consequence. I mean, I'm a school teacher. If there's no consequence in my classroom, the kids are going to run right over me. I mean, don't do that. If I don't do anything when they do that, I mean, I'm dead as a school teacher. So it's and that's what Israel is doing. Well, here's the purpose of the congressional bill, ladies and gentlemen. It's a really ugly, rough draft, but the point is organizations are looking at it now and let them chop it up. We need to find a common direction where we can head insofar as what they perceive to be possible legislation in this country. They're going to have to look at it, chop it up, and introduce it. They're the ones that are going to have to take a stand and say, I'm going to take my effort and time to do this. We need to have a common direction. We cannot agree on one or two state solution. Let's start agreeing on the treatment, the occupation. Let's start making, most importantly, that aid unconditional. Because as a whole, conditional. I made the same mistake as you at the march. I'm sorry. He said the same thing. I just did it to them right now. I apologize. But anyways, <laughs> you have, we have to make that aid conditional. And part of human rights activists, we don't get paid much money. I know you came out here, you're not getting paid $10 million to do this. There's something inside of you that I appreciate. Each and every one of you, you have a light. Or as the Bible says, Matthew 5, 16, let it shine. And in the Quran, fight injustice with truth. And I'm not, I'm still learning a little bit of Judaism, but I, I need to go back to the synagogue a little more. But anyways, I've noticed this. Every religion, and it's not about religion, has something special that can bring these people together and resolve the situation. And what you showed, the psychological aspect is the most important. The demonization from cradle to grave of each and every one of you, from our youth, through the religious establishments, the educational establishments, through media establishments, every year, year after year, from our parents to our generation, teaching us that the opposition is different. Some of the lessons of this demonization is you can't compromise with the savages, Native Americans. They're not Christian. You take their language. You know, Thomas Jefferson notes the state of Virginia, section entitled Laws, Query 14, page 231 said, the whites and blacks must be separated on emancipation. They'll never forgive each other. The blacks are a bit different too, you have to segregate them, otherwise there will be an extinction of one race. And interestingly enough, when the Native Americans were segregated, you see what happened to them. We have to learn from our, we're greater people now in America. 